already in the same week, we have the world's largest NPM breach. Let's jump right in to what happened. I wanted to threat model first at a large scale what is actually happening with these NPM breaches. Um, the first thing to understand is that really when we use open source dependencies, we are using code from just about anywhere that's untrusted. So that includes code that can be compromised via PR injection, that the maintainer can be fish, as we saw earlier this week, the pipeline can be compromised. Basically, there are a ton of different ways that NPM can get compromised. And what this latest attack did, the Shai Halud attack, was essentially in a few different steps. First, it made a public repo within your GitHub organization called Shai Halud. Um, it then, when it was installing, uh, would scrape secrets from your account using tools like Trufflehog to detect secrets, and then it would extract those, save them to a file, and add them to this public repo. Then in that repo, it would create a workflow to send the secrets to webhook.site, which is a free uh, site to monitor incoming webhooks uh, that's meant to be used for testing. In this case, the attacker is just grabbing all the credentials off of it as they show up. Then what makes this attack super unique is that it's actually the first self-propagating attack. So it would use NPM credentials if they were discovered during this phase to upload malicious code to NPM. So it would take over the NPM registry for wherever it found these credentials and propagate itself forward, uh, publishing itself as it went on. And then finally, it would make some private repos public just as an, and rename them with that prefix, the Shai Halud prefix, to make it searchable to steal the data from these repos. So this attack ended up hitting hundreds of repos. There's a complete list on a few different sites, right? But we have hundreds of repos here. So let's talk about specifically how the self-propagation worked here. So first it would download the existing package from the NPM registry. Then it would bump the package version to the next patch version. And then it would copy its own payload into the tarball as a bundle.js to make sure that the code now lives inside of it. And then it would republish it as a new version. And so in this way, it would continue to propagate throughout the entire ecosystem and affect hundreds of packages. And so what should you do about this? The first thing to do is to pin your dependency versions and this sucks, but that's going through like this. And removing your auto updates from your packages. This will make it so that you have to manually update to the patch versions whenever this happens. It's the only way really to guarantee that you prevent yourself uh, downstream because there are tools that exist downstream and I'll talk about those now, but really that's the first step. The second step is there's a few different tools out there. Um, Socket provides one, Aikido provides one. There's some open source ones that do NPM wrappers. And basically this is just where you alias, you, you have your developers alias their NPM install to use this tool instead. The tool checks if the uh, package isn't on the known malware list and it blocks the NPM install if it does. And this approach tends to be pretty heavy handed. It's tough to get developer adoption. So I just haven't seen it widely deployed in the places I've looked at. And ultimately it only works once the end, once the malware has been discovered. And so even this is not a foolproof solution. That's why pinning dependency versions is really the only way to guarantee it. This is just a way to guarantee that if it's a known malware, you won't get popped. The second thing is to do eBPF monitoring on your developer pipelines. Step security really focuses on this as like a, a tool that monitors for that monitors for unknown actions or anomalous actions within your CI CD pipelines. This can tend to be a very noisy sort of solution because essentially uh, your build pipelines are always building and executing new code. And so it tends to be noisy, um, but it's the only way to detect in line if things are happening within your CI CD pipeline. The other piece is to make sure you're logging your GitHub action log somewhere that is searchable and queryable. This can be to a sim, this can be to some other solutions, just getting backups, just making sure that you have a way to search these uh, build logs uh, when the time comes to have to do them. And finally, in your production environment, this is where you have to do eBPF monitoring, but I've got a ton of other content on eBPF monitoring for production environments. And this is why I think the application layer is so critical, is this is the only way in which you can detect some of this stuff. And so really, this is the worst one of these attacks that we've seen so far. The self-propagation aspect is huge, and we saw a huge number of secrets exposed through the singularity attack. And this one, most of the press was created because um, the attackers used prompt injection to try to do some of the scraping. But this exposed 2,000 secrets, and likely this attack is a follow-up to that one. And so there are many secrets and credentials that have gotten stolen as part of this attack, and so we should expect to see additional follow-ups along the way. So it's really important that we take action quickly to 
pin our dependency versions and try to avoid getting hosed in this in any follow-up attack.